Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're going to go back a few centuries in time to a beer style that's been around for literally hundreds of years. Schlitz? Uh, <laughs> it just seemed like it. It just seems like <laughs> it. That, that old case you bought that oh. one time. <laughs> oh, it's Blatz. That's oh, that's one. Blatz. Uh, I interviewed uh, uh, Mika Leitinen, who wrote this book, Viking Age Brew, uh, which I recommend uh, to you. It's really, it's really interesting. It talks about brewing sati, which is this ancient ale. It's a farmhouse Farm high elves, high elves. <laughs> from southern Finland. S southern, yeah, <laughs> it's a Finnish uh, farmhouse ale, and and he also goes into some detail about uh, farmhouse ales uh, from around that region as well. But these have been around for you know a thousand years, and they're just now you know gaining in popularity and interest from craft brewers and home brewers. Hmm. Uh, they were you know just kind of hidden away in, in farmhouses you know in that in that part of the world. Uh, but it's really interesting because of the technology and the ingredients um, and the technique that, that goes into putting these together. And, they, and there are no hops. There are no hops. Uh, there's uh, no boiling in a lot of these. Wow. And uh, they use juniper. Some people, of course, it, it differs from farmhouse to farmhouse, but there are some general rules to the sati that uh, Mika talks about. And uh, I interviewed Mika, this is not, this is not Mika, I don't think, um, on the cover, but uh, there are some, I, I did an interview with Mika on Basic Brewing Radio uh, recently, and it was a really interesting conversation, uh, and he gave me some advice on how to brew this very beer. So, sati, it has very fairly simple grain bill. There's a lot of grain in it. They do extended mashes. It's a step mash where they may spend two hours at, say, you know, hand warm temperature and then warm it up to like, you know, another step in the step mash and spend two hours there and then another step into the sacrification range and spend two hours there and then, you know, wind up uh, at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees uh, or 80 degrees Celsius, yeah. <clears throat> 176 degrees Fahrenheit uh, as kind of a pasteurization step because uh, the equipment that they used to use, and here you see this wooden barrel uh, that uh, this uh, brewer is huh. using for mashing, uh, they would mash in this wooden vessel because they didn't yeah. have metal vessels big enough to do all of the of the mashing so they right. would they would use hot water infusions or and uh, juniper infusions into the mash to bring up the different temperatures and then the fun thing is they they would take this uh, uh, device which I'm not going to remember the name of but it's like a hollow log <laughs> and they would and they would put uh, uh, juniper branches in the bottom of it, and then pour the mash into that, and then louder, you know, rinse the grains okay. in there, and then and then take off the the uh, wort, and uh, you know, pitch the cool it down a little bit and pitch the yeast, and uh, and there you go. They don't they don't use hops like you said. Most of them don't use hops, and if they do use hops, there's not a lot of it. Uh, but uh, most of them use juniper branches, and you can use juniper as um, uh, sanitizer. So if you take juniper and you make a juniper infusion, you can use that to sanitize your gear. Uh, hmm. uh, but it also adds a bit of flavor as well. Yeah. So, uh, and they also use um, Finnish baker's yeast, which uh, ha is, uh, gives it a kind of a uh, Hefeweizen type character, has banana and clove character, but the, the baker's yeast also has a lactobacillus component in it. So, I was gonna say, it's probably uh, not. So it's often drink, <clears throat> drunk fresh. Uh, so, they, so you brew this big old beer, and these are fairly high alcohol beers, so you brew these beers for a festival, you know, for an event. Yeah. And they're meant to be drunk fresh, and gone <laughs> because they, they got that uh, lactobacillus because they're gonna they're gonna turn on you. they're gonna turn sour so wow and they're served still it's like drinking muddy water out of a hollow log <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite blues song yeah <laughs> but uh so so they're served still and this uh and uh, this is my re my my attempt 
it's a I'm calling it a pseudo sati because it's not really it's 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 my kind of farmhouse ale because I used ingredients that were available to me. So you want to you want to hear how yeah, I, yeah, I, made, I had to make notes in my brewer's logbook and how to do this. So I used my uh, high gravity uh, electric or my warthog electric brewing system from High Gravity uh, right. in Tulsa. Yeah, HighGravityBrew.com, and uh, and I used it's brew in a bag, uh, but it's got this recirculation pump which will recirculate right. the wort uh, over the you know over the mash, and that helped with my efficiency a lot. So. Uh, here we go. I began with six gallons of water, 22.7 liters, and I added in 15 pounds or 6.8 kilograms of Pilsner malt, 8 ounces or 226 grams of 40 Lovabond crystal, 1 pound or 450 grams of malted rye, and that's the malt bill. And all of that went into that six gallons of water. Boy, was it stiff. Uh, by the end of, the, of doughing in, I had to uh, turn the recirculation pump on to spray some water on top of, of the stuff that I was pouring in. But uh, I rested uh, at 148 degrees Fahrenheit or 64 C for two hours. And, wow. af and after a few minutes, the, the mash got a lot easier to stir because, you know, it was, the enzymes are starting to work on it. Yep. So it was a very long uh, mash, and uh, to that, I don't, you know, I don't have juniper, but I do have rosemary growing in my yard. So I took four branches of rosemary, and I added it to the mash, and I increased the temperature to 176 degrees Fahrenheit, or 80 C, and I held that for 15 minutes. And that, since we're not gonna boil, uh, that's a, a pasteurization step to, to kill all the, the bugs living on the, on the grain. Mm -hmm. So I, t I transferred that to a sanitized bucket with a chiller in it that I also sanitized, just for, just for safety's sake. And I chilled the wort to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 C. And into that I pitched uh, Kvyking, A44 Kvyking from Imperial Organic Yeast, which is a, a Kvike blend, a blend of three Kvike strains. Mm -hmm. Then I took that outside and I fermented it on the porch uh, for four days. And it was, you know, during the day it was 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 C. And so after four days, I cold crashed the, uh, the, the fermenter overnight in my kegerator and then kegged it the next day. So from brew day to serving in the keg was seven days. So uh, listen to this. Starting gravity on this was 1082. So I, I think that the system did it's a big old beer. Yeah, the yeah. system did real well. Yeah. And with this, with brewing a, a big beer like this, and it's a raw ale, it's not boiled. Brewing a big beer like this, it's important that you get as much efficiency out of your mash as possible because if you miss your mark and you're brewing a big beer when you're boiling, you can just boil a little longer and make it a bigger beer. Right. Can't do that if you're not boiling. So uh, starting gravity 1082, finishing gravity was uh, 1008, I believe, for an ABV of 10.5%. So it's pretty, wow. pretty big. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to think, are there any details I left out? It's pretty, um, I, you know, I, Mika, uh, you know, he, he advised me that the, that the extended uh, rests in the, in the mash uh, regime were not necessary. And he said, you know, two hours at sacrification temperature is probably enough for in the mash. And, uh, you know, I think he was right. Uh, so here we go. It's cloudy. It's, it's kind of tan. <laughs> You're a brave soul for, for trying this. <clears throat> I'm gonna go more with beige. <laughs> it's beige. <laughs> if, if it were a Crayola in the, uh, you know, in the 60s, it'd probably be called flesh, but that's another, <laughs> that's another deal. So here we go. It smells good. It's a good sign. It's good. <laughs> now we tried one of these uh, Asati in um, uh, wow. at, in Providence, Rhode Island at HomebrewCon and it was fermented with Hefeweizen yeast 
and uh, it was it was like banana bread. You know, it was like mm -hmm. banana and clove and very sweet. Uh, this one I, fin I think finished a little lower in gravity, so it's not as sweet. It's really what, what good. Yeah, it's got uh, it's it's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of spice and maybe some tropical fruit. That's what I was waiting for you to say. This Kviking strain, the description uh, in, uh, for the imperial uh, yeast yeah. is uh, guava and um, tropical fruit. Yeah, I and definitely I, get And that I do up. get that from this. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get some kind of black pepper, guava, papaya, those real soft tropical fruit mm -hmm. flavors. I don't get any of the rosemary. I actually do. Do I, you? I actually do get a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's not enough to be offensive. No, <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not. It's I, I definitely it, not overdone. I wanted it to be a little, a little bit more. But well, if you're, but if you're getting it, then that's that's good. I think it's one of those flavors. Rosemary, like lavender, is wonderful unless you get too much. Right. And then it, both of them can be soapy. They can and, go to soap and, sa and, and savory. And, and say, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so I, but I do pick up just a little bit, and I think it's really nice. Um, I really quite like it. In a very slight way, it reminds me a little bit of that mockley that you were playing around. Oh with. yeah, yeah. And maybe it's because of the mouth feels rather thick, uh -huh. and it's a little bit milkshakey. I like this a lot better than the mockley. I got to tell you. <laughs> and the and the alcohol is, is the alcohol is, is high. it's quite strong. Yeah. But it, but this isn't hot. This doesn't have a. No, there's not a. It, it doesn't. I don't solvent. feel like I'm drinking not, solvent. Huh? Yeah, it's not solventy. Uh, the uh, the Kvyking, th this these Kvyk strains. Uh, it's really good. They really do a great job of 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 knocking down the alcohol in a short period of time and and doing it at hot temperatures without putting off those horrible hot alcohol flavors. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's those yeast strains, and, and I'm only really familiar with the imperial versions of them. So the Kviking and the Loki, though I know that there are others out there commercially. But you had but, you uh, have my bootleg biology oh yeah, had that Oslo one. Had that uh, one. Pilsner. All I can say is that I'm blown away by them. Mm -hmm. I, I've been telling folks if they can't make up their mind what they want to use, just, well, try this. It'll work. You know, just especially just in it. the summertime. Especially in the summertime. I could really see this beer, I can see where they would brew it as a fest beer. Obviously, I agree to drink it right now because it's going to turn, it's going to get ugly on you pretty quick. <laughs> but, because uh, I, I think once this does go sour, it really wouldn't be very good. Well, I, I think that in the, since I didn't use the baker's yeast, I used the Kviking, and I pasteurized it. If my process is clean, this, prob this shouldn't go sour. Okay. All right, because because so I use the yeah. bike, the Kviking, which is a which doesn't have the lacto in it. Well, but my but my uh, my thesis is that <laughs> if it went sour, I could see where it wouldn't be right so good. Right. But what I was going to say is that I could see where it would be great with barbecue. Oh. And like this would be, you know, you're having you're just putting on the dog, you know, and you get the smokers going, and the this would be a a great treat. Mm -hmm. And it's really. It's it's more quaffable than one would imagine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, I'm glad you like it. I actually, I, I quite do. I think it's really quite good. It's it's a I won't say it's off putting. It's it's not. But it's it, not very it's, pretty. It's not the most beautiful beer in the it, world. It's it's traditionally uh, it's traditionally consumed in a in a wooden bucket with two handles on it like this, and you. Oh. <laughs> So you throw it back like that. So maybe you it's don't like care, drink. You don't care about what it looks like because you, yeah, <laughs> it's like drinking in Nebraska, pretty much. You're just seeing what what the previous guys have been mm -hmm. eating before you uh, <laughs> drink out of the box. Of course, at ten and a half percent alcohol or or whatever, uh, and they can be stronger, but they can be not as strong too. So I think you've got a winner here. So good job. Well, there you go. Well, check out yeah. check out Viking Age Brew, the craft of brewing sati farmhouse ale from uh, Mika Leiten, and, and uh, definitely check out the uh, conversation that he and I had on Basic Brewing Radio um, because uh, it's a lot of fun. And and this is 
You know, who who knew? Who knew? That I would be brewing beers that I was not boiling and not putting any hops in. <laughs> well, I got to say, you know, we've been doing this a long time. We've been drinking a lot of beer over the years, and I've gotten very cynical. So it's like, I've had pretty mm-hmm. much every beer out there. I, You know, this is a new thing. Yeah. You know, it's like I haven't, I, this is new to me. Even though I had one in Homebrew Con, but nonetheless, mm. that's probably the only only two examples of the beer I've ever had in my life. So there's always a new beer to find. <laughs> that's, the, that's the glimmer of hope in my life. <laughs> that's the one I got. Well, on with the hunt. On with the hunt. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. I think that's really good.